Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. I thought I'd do a little bit of a different video, one on some equipment, and in particular, portable power for astrophotography. Now you're gonna find if you're just starting out, it may not be that big an issue, but the more uh, equipment you buy, the, more, the bigger the equipment, the more power hunger becomes. And if you're a kind of person that likes to travel for astrophotography or simply doesn't have access to an AC outlet, power becomes a pretty big issue. You never want your imaging session to end early just because you ran out of power. That one has happened probably to all of us at one time or another, and you're kicking yourself thinking, why didn't I bring something else to me? Or why didn't I have the right power source? So this video hopefully will help you with that. And I can at least give you some insight in some of the products here that I've used in my year and a half or so of astrophotography. So we'll start at sort of the very simplest forms of it to the more advanced, depending on your equipment. So I made some videos early on in the channel on sort of the ultimate astrophotography setup for beginners. Portable, easy to use, nothing complicated. And in that setup, we have a tripod, a star tracker, uh, obviously a telescope and a DSLR. Now the nice thing about a DSLR is that it has its own power source. Generally speaking, they come with a battery. If not, you can always uh, buy extra batteries. So you can have two, three batteries. That's what I used to do on me all of them charged and generally speaking I'd have to change the battery at least once during the night but at least I had batteries there it was no big deal pop it out put a new one no problem for power for the camera now the star tracker itself they that this one in particular the star adventure does come with its own batteries and you can um, you can put uh, rechargeables in it which I do have as a backup but I still as you'll see in those videos if you haven't watched them I always have with on me a USB power uh, a battery pack this is i think a 26,000 milliamp power pack so one that you can travel with as well and you can see it has two usb hubs so what i would do is i would uh, attach a power cord to the star tracker and plug that in so that would easily power the star tracker and as well i had bought a usb powered uh, do heater got this off amazon super cheap does a great job so this again would be powered by the the usb power hub and of course there's the other end of the do heater and that would wrap around your telescope. So basically the camera had its own power. This would power the star tracker and the do heater. And this would last pretty much all night. I always have more than one of these. So if power became an issue, I could quickly unplug it and plug it into a new one. But again, I would always keep batteries in my star tracker and then it would resort to battery power if this ever died. So generally speaking, this would get me four five, sometimes even six hours of imaging. So pretty much a full night. Even on one of these, you can get these on Amazon, super cheap, somewhere around $25, $30. Now, the next step up would be, in my opinion anyway, when it comes to portable power with USB and other hubs, would be the Celestron power tank. Now, there's two versions. There's a smaller version here, and there's the bigger version. Now, I started with the smaller version. Now, again, keeping focus on a simple setup here, like my Star Tracker, now you start to incorporate an ASI Air, which requires power. Then you start to incorporate as well an astrophotography dedicated camera, which doesn't have its own battery. Again, you need power. Now, the nice thing is that the ASI Air will power the astrophotography dedicated camera. But of course, you still need to power that ASI Air and make sure it has enough to also deliver power to that camera. In this case, I found that if that's what you're going to go with, this is a great option, the smaller power tank. Because as a 12 volt power source here, that plugs into the same cable that comes with the ASI Air, the same thing that powers the your camera, which is a 12 volt, uh, as you can see on the back of the camera here, a 12 volt port, port. So that cord will plug into either the ASI Air and into here, and then you would need another cable from the ASI Air into the camera itself. And I've always found that, you know, withstanding like a crazy cold minus 30 degree night, like here in Toronto, we get sometimes in the winter, this thing will hold up pretty much most of the night. Um, and again, when I'm when I'm doing with a simple setup like that, I still use this power hub to power the star tracker and the dew heater. And then this one is simply powering now the ASI Air and in turn, the astrophotography dedicated camera. So the nice thing is with this power hub, I just use this little pouch that's on the side here of my, um, tripod so that doesn't take up any space that would just sit in there and then all I had to bring with me was this the great thing about these if you never heard of them or never seen one in person they're super durable um, other than when the lid falls off 
They're made of like hard plastic. They have a light on them, which is really great. This one does as well. This shines both white light and red light, okay? And it also has hubs for your USB power. So you can charge your cell phone on this or any other small device, but they're really nice to have. They have, they come with a little belt that you can clip onto sort of the side of your tripod if you want to, to keep it off the ground, but I usually just leave it on the ground. It is fairly heavy, just keep that in mind. And this thing is great. So for that setup, ASI Air, Astrotography dedicated camera, and having this uh, power hub to power the star tracker and your dew heater, that worked perfectly. And again, it's quite small, easy to travel with. Now, when I got my astrophotography mount, that's when things got a little bit more complicated and I'll elaborate that on that in a minute. So of course, you know, you've seen my other videos, hopefully on my CEM40 EC made by iOptron. So big time mount, really great mount, requires obviously a little bit more power. Now, most, I find that most astrophotography mounts um, come with this cigarette lighter style I don't know what the official name of it is, but uh, adapter. We've all seen these before. Um, this is the kind of thing you'd plug into your car for, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to power. This is generally speaking what comes with a mount. Now with that Ioptron, it actually came with an AC style power source like you see here, which I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, I wanted, I had already bought this power tank, the bigger version, and I wanted to be able to use this primarily. So what I did was with the Ioptron, I have the, the power cord that came with it, but instead I bought an adapter off eBay that has this cigarette lighter style adapter. The other style is just a 12 volt port that would plug into um, the back of the mount. And then I would use this larger style uh, power tank. So as you can see, it has its the typical 12 volt, just like this one does. You can see they both have the same one, but the difference is that's all that this one has other than the USB hubs. The bigger one, not only does it have more power, holds more power, but it also has this uh, cigarette lighter style adapter. So that's where that plug would go in. And of course, as I mentioned, the other end goes into the mount. So now once you've powered a mount like that, most mounts will have their own uh, ports in order to power other things. I talked about this in my overview and full review of my Optron mount. So with this, powering the mount, the mount could then power the ASI Air, the ASI Air could then power the um, astrography dedicated camera. Now the issue I had was that when I first started using my mount, I was using a dew heater. I have multiple dew heaters as I have multiple scopes. Um, I, I, I did use this one a little bit as well because there are USB uh, hubs on my uh, mount on the saddle plate, but I also wanted to try another one. I have another dew heater that uses just a, a D it's a D-style battery. And basically that it just holds that D-style battery and then you just clip uh, two clips onto it and that just on its own powers the dew heater. So the nice thing is there's no cords. The bad thing is it drained a lot of battery. I found I was either throwing out expensive Duracell batteries because they would die very quickly, sometimes not even a full night. So I really didn't love that one. I'm, I'm, I'll save it for later on down the road, maybe with my Edge HD, because it is a, a bigger one but I decided to buy more like a 12 volt style dew heater. So I bought one and it's a really great one. And I ran into a problem though. This was great for powering, as I mentioned, the mount and the mount in turn, the ASI Air and the camera. But when I used, started using a dew heater that also plugged into that ASI Air, so in other words, the ASI Air was now having to uh, power the dew heater, this thing all of a sudden was not lasting. And this would always last all night. Never once did it die me until I started using that dew heater. It obviously was pulling a lot of power and this thing just couldn't keep up. I think it would last about three to four hours depending on the temperature and then it would die on me. So I quickly realized that this was becoming a problem. Now, another thing that you need to keep in mind is that some of these, I can only speak to ZWO cameras because I've never used QHY, but some of them specify that you should be using a dedicated power source for them. So some of the cameras have two stage coolers. I, off the top of my head, I know the 533 specifically mentions that. Here's a, This is directly from ZWO's website. I believe the 2600 and the 6200 also require, I'm sure there's others require, at least according to ZWO, their own power source. You can purchase a power plug um, from ZWO and it'll come with an AC style cord. So that's where something like this comes in 
in hand. So this is the Crisdonia. It's a 27,000 milliamp power pack that you can power uh, charge up ahead of time and it just you take it like this no cords or anything it also has some usb power hubs and a type c as well so this i would use to power the camera and basically that would power just the camera and then with that being taken care of this was now enough to power the mount and then turn the mount to asi air and the dew heater so for now that's what i'm using these two I could take these two out with me if of course I don't have access to uh, a plug on you know the side of the house or something like that especially if I go out in the field now there is other options of course if you want to start spending a little bit more money on power uh, portable power you know that you're going to be taking your bigger mount out with all the dew heater the camera the ASI air and you'll be taking it out into the field you're definitely going to need some serious power so you have a couple options uh, there is this product here. This is one of many. This is called a Jackery. Um, you're going to want one of the better models, probably the, the, the 1000 or up. Uh, they start to get quite expensive, but that's the kind of unit that stores a lot of power. But not only does it store a lot of power, it has just about every power outlet you could or possibly acquire. So 12 volt, it'll do the cigarette uh, lighter style, it has an AC power. So any kind of plug you have, you'll be able to accommodate it. You know, it'll be able to, to accommodate you. As I mentioned, also holds more power, but they come at a price. You know, you're talking possibly over a thousand dollars Canadian, maybe even more, twelve, thirteen hundred. So it starts to get expensive. But that's basically the cost of a telescope, you know. So it's something that you need to think about. There's also power options, uh, dew heater ports uh, that will power, um, you know, multiple things and, and provide power where you need them. Uh, there's a few different brands, you know, that I'll list here. But again, that's where you start to spend some money. They can be eight hundred to a thousand dollars Canadian plus. And so again, now you're starting to sink a lot of money. You got to really think about what direction you want to go, how much that you use portable power, and then sort of make up your mind. It is nice to have options. I will say that it's nice to have this when I need it. Say I just want to have a simple night. It's super cold outside. I just want to go out with this this little setup here, and my ASI Air and my a ZWO camera on a telescope, then I can just bring this with me. I have this as well. It's a little bit bigger, but both of these charge up quite quick. They're great in the cold. Uh, they're super durable. You kick them over, they're not going to break. It's nice to have those options, but I can see where that Jackery or something like that would really come into come handy, where it has everything you need. Also, if you're using uh, double rigs, say you're going out and maybe you're using a smaller rig and then a bigger one, the Jackery could provide everything for the bigger rig and then you could bring one of these smaller ones to provide power to your smaller rig. So there's a lot of different circumstances and there's a lot of power options out there. I'm sure I'm leaving a few out, but again, I'm trying to highlight the things that I've used personally for some time and can speak to. All these are great products. Chrisdonia makes even uh, bigger ones. I, as I mentioned, this is 27,000. They make bigger ones. These start to get expensive too. These can start being four or five hundred dollars. I didn't want to spend that kind of money on that. This one is definitely good enough to power a camera all night, no problem, even if you're using the cooler. If you start going to minus 40, you will see a difference. This thing will start to drop quickly, okay? Personally, I don't see the benefit of having minus 40. And in the winter, the cooler on the camera is barely running anyway. It it almost holds a temperature of minus five, minus six without even doing anything. So a lot to keep in mind, but keep in mind when you do when you are dealing with cooler temperatures like we are this time of year, it's February uh, 2022, these things will die quicker. So again, I like to have options. Obviously, the best source is a pure source of power from your house or wherever. But if that's not an option, these are some great options as well. So if I do end up getting a Jackery, I'll definitely do a review on that. But I can say I love each of these. They serve a purpose. And I think that, uh, you know, you'd be happy with any of them depending on what you require. But I definitely recommend having USB power hub. These are super cheap on Amazon. Why not? Even if it's for your cell phone that dies, that could die on you. Um, it's just great to have and they take a very little room and they're pretty quick at charging. And then one of these is great, even if it's just for the light. Okay, on them, they both have a nice light. And that's great. Even if it's just to use the red light so you don't ruin your night vision to make sure you don't leave anything behind when you're cleaning up. So great products, some that I think if you haven't already, you should look into. And then you can think about getting something even bigger like that Jackery that I mentioned that I'm considering down the road. But hopefully this helps guys with portable power. It's definitely an important part 
of astrophotography. You know, you see these guys going out with car batteries and all that. I'm just not interested in that. I, I prefer these kind of products that are made to, you know, they're not dangerous. They're not going to start on fire or anything. And they're made to, you know, withstand uh, cold temperatures and probably even a little bit of moisture and stuff like that. So that's why I, I stick with stuff like that. But I hope this helps. And, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to drop some comments in the video here. And I hope that this helped you out. So I look forward to sharing another video with you soon. I got some new targets that I've been imaging and processing, and I look forward to sharing those with you. And of course, some more equipment reviews coming soon. So I look forward to sharing that with you. But in the meantime, take care and see you on the next one.